Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video of our programming language series. In this video, I'll be talking about one of the important package in visualization in R. It's called ggplot. So ggplot is there now almost for 10 years now. It's been used by like multiple or many users ac across the globe. It's so popular, right? You can see a lot of uh, questions being asked in Stack Overflow, right? And there's a like one of the important, important package we got in the R, right? Let's explore this package today. Uh, let's ggplot2. Let's get started. For the today's video, I will have prepared this presentation alongside I have already have opened up the R console behind the scenes. So, I will be uh, showing you the demo on this R console. Let's get started. First of all, what is grammar of graphics? So, gg stands for grammar of graphics, where the graphics stand for the distinct layers of graph grammatical elements, right? It's a meaningful plots we can draw with the help of aesthetic mappings. So, in order to understand what it means, like what the, what's the meaning of layers and all, I would like to compare this with the OSI model of networking. In networking, we used to have a OSI model, and OSI model got multiple layers, like from a physical layer, data link layer, and then we have a presentation layer at very top. You must have observed that when data is traveling from the physical layer towards the presentation layer, the information in the data or the packet or the data whatever you're sending it keep on adding because every layer add its own information right at very end of your physical layer the data is uh, having very less information but when you keep on going up to, to uh, from bottom to up to in the osi model the every layer add its own header and trailer to, to make it more meaningful right in the same way in the case of this grammar of graphics or ggplot you will find that we got some layers available and every layer add its own functionality means we start with very less meaningful graph and we end up with very uh, hugely or uh, informatic graph right it means we go from very less to very like attractive or meaningful graph this is the point of adding the layers in the existing graph let's get started so for that we have these layers available we have a layers like data layer meaning is that the layer uh, through which we can specify our data set on which we'll be working for today's video i'll be working on iris data set which is already in built in r aesthetics meaning is you need to define the scales onto which we need to map our data followed by geometries uh, the visual elements used for data meaning is like how you want to represent your data in the form of bar chart box plot scatter plot line graph right right this this will be specified with the help of geometry facet meaning is you need to uh, plot some sub graphs so, so you have to plot sub uh, small multiples this we can do with the facets followed by statistics meaning is if you want to represent the data you want to add more and more information in the form of some stat statistical function like linear regression or some other things uh, just to en enhance the understanding of the graph followed by coordinates it means you want to specify the space on which data will be plotted at last we'll be having a themes means if you want to customize the graph whether you want to display in a regular theme or you want to uh, like uh, add some uh, background thing right so that to make it more attractive guys we need to work in the same order right this is the order we need to follow in today's video starting from data we will be ending up with the themes let's get started as I've already told you, the very first layer we got is data layer, the which, which specify the uh, data being plotted. And for today's video, we'll be making use of iris as a data set. The iris is already there in the R in build. We don't have to uh, like download it from our internet or anywhere else. It's already there. Let's get started. First of all, we need to load the library ggplot2. If you don't have a library available, ggplot2, you need to install this package first. Then we need to load the library and using ggplot function, let's include the data equal to iris now in this of query we just have a single layer available only data it means nothing will be available there will be no scales there will be nothing no graph only data we are specifying let's get started so i'm going back to my r console so let me copy the content so that it will be uh, we'll be saving time i'm copying this content and i'm going with the r console here so the r has been opened up right let's uh, load the both the things I'm loading the library ggplot2 followed by ggplot data to iris. When I press enter, you can see it here. Uh, some, one screen is got displayed, one screen got shown, but nothing is available. This is the point. That's why I'm showing. Uh, I'm saying to you that because we haven't added other layers, it's still very raw at very first step we are in. If we are keeping adding the next layer, then you can you can see something uh, in front of you, right? This is that data layer. It means nothing is available, but we, we are in a process now. We have done the first step. Now let's move to the second step. I'm going back. So for that, I'm again uh, presenting. Yeah. So moving further, then we have an aesthetic layer. Aesthetic layer meaning is it's the next grammatical elements. Uh, it's a static layer, or we call it as a AES in short or AES function in which we need to define the scales. 
So this layer specify how we want to map our data onto the scales of a plot. For that, we have the uh, we have this information available that a static layer maps the variables in our data into a scales in which a graphical visualization such as the x and y coordinates. Let's define the scales. Let's define the axes with the help of AES function. For that, we have the AES function available through which we can add the scales. How we can do it? So as I've already told you that we have a iris data set available in which we're going to have the x axis will be a sepal length and y will be a sepal width. The thing is like this iris is very popular data set. It's used in a machine learning. It's used everywhere. It's one of the popular data set in the machine learning uh, world as well. Now let's uh, uh, in the existing iris, right? Let's try to add the labels, sorry, the axis, okay? On x and y axis, let's do it. I'm going back and I'm copying this code, right? I'm copying the content and copy and let's add some information to it. You can see something will be changed in the plot. Now going back to the plot, you can see now on the left side, we have a sepal width available on the right and the bottom side, we have a sepal length available. Maybe it's not completely visible, but you can see the scales also got printed. Plus there's are some, uh, some boxes are available. Very, very faint uh, gray color boxes are available. Some, some, uh, you can see it here. So th it, this is possible with the help of AES function. At, at first, when we call the data layer, nothing was available. But with the AES function, you can see the, the sepal length, sepal width, the scales, and this small boxes behind the background got now, it's, it's now visible. It means like if you keep on adding the layers, you'll be having more and more information available in the graph. Let's go back. Let me now present it back, okay. So moving further, next we have, you can see it here, that this way you'll be having the information which I already have shown you in the graph. Next is geometry layer, very, very important layer that where we have to specify the visual element means in which uh, plot in, with the help of which graph you want to display your data. So this is called geometry layer. Uh, for that we use a GOM function or GOM, uh, GEOM means geometry layer for short. So this is, it means like earlier we used to have a data. Now we have added the aesthetic layer, the scales. Now on the top of it, let's add another layer called geometry. For that, we have to follow this little syntax in which we are specifying ggplot. Iris is a data set. AES means the, the X and Y axis, right? We have already specified. Now on this P variable, now add the gm underscore point. So you must be wondering what is gm underscore point? Gm is means it's clearly understood that it's a geometry. What is point here? Uh, let me show you that uh, these are these things available, right? Gm underscore point meaning it's, it's a scatter plot. Gm underscore blocks box plot means it's a box plot. It means we have a multiple variations available through which you want to, we, uh, through which we can uh, specify the uh, graph over there. Now let's do it. I'm going back to the R console and let's uh, add the information. So for that, I'm using the same syntax which I've, is available here. Let me now put this information in the P variable. On top of it, let me add the uh, geometry call point it means scatter plot will be displayed now if i'm adding this gm underscore point all right added let's see in the r you can see it now the scatters are available right this is meaning is this is the meaning of gm underscore point it means we have added in a geometry it means now we have added three layers now data layer followed by the uh, aesthetic layer followed by the geometry layer now moving further next one we are coming up now let's uh, present the data this presentation again so moving further, we have added this geometry. These are the some of the options available. Now, uh, again, we can also add the same way the box plot as well. The everything will be same. Just instead of having using the point, we can use the blocks box plot in order to print in a box plot fashion. In the same way, we can also go with a histogram as well. If you want to print the histogram, the same same option, nothing changes. Then we have a facet layer available. Facet layer meaning is if you want to plot subplots, if you want to create subplots within the same graphic object, guys. In the iris, we got a three species information available, right? We have a Virginica, Setosa, and other, uh, the third one is also available. So I want to display the information of the three layers in a separate plot. This way I can do with the facet layer. For that, so uh, this facet layer, although it's not essential, the thing is the first three layers were essential. It means the mandatory part of the G, uh, this uh, GG plot, but the rest of the layers, which I'm now coming up along uh, along with this facet layer, all are optional. It just to, if you want to enhance the uh, like information you want to enhance the understanding of a graph you can add this information the facet layer and all so let's now add the facet information it means i want to uh, print the three different species species in the three different subplots for that i'm using a function facet underscore wrap let's do it so uh, let me copy this content before that let me show you this is iris you can see in the iris 
the species column we got three different species available setosa versicolor and virginica okay i want to plot the uh, information of these three species differently in the graph for that i'll be using this syntax let me copy copy and let me paste it here so in this way what will happen the three different plots will be shown you can see now for setosa we got a different graph for versicolor we got different graph for virginica we got different uh, different graph this is possible with the help of facets right now let's move further let me present it back okay moving further then we have a statistical layer like means if you want to add more information more statistical information in your uh, existing graph we can do it for that i'm using this uh, in this case i'm just using a function called stat underscore smooth in which i'm using method equal to lm means linear regression model i want to add this linear regression model or create this model to to this graph so everything remains same we have a same aes function same gum underscore point now we have added another information called stat underscore smooth in which the linear model will be or linear regression model will be uh, will be attached alongside let's do it so for that i'm just again copy and pasting the code on my r console let me copy the content go back to r and let's copy this and i'm uh, putting it here so here we are specifying the uh, formula right you can see it here gm underscore smooth now let me check out you can see it now this is the point right you can see this the this is the uh, like kind of a layer you can see uh, one one line got printed here with the help of linear regression model right this is a point this is uh, it means the gm underscore smooth is using formula y tilled x right uh this one we have a predictor variable available like we all uh, in the it's more of the statistical uh, information that where we uh, used to have this linear regression and all so in which we have a we have a y tilde x we uh, because it takes the uh, expression in the form of y tilde x right moving further so uh, we have already added multiple information now let's uh, wind it wind this up with the remaining layers right afterwards we can have this uh, we all, all, we already have seen this like we can use the uh, we can also add the same face set underscore wrap so that we can have a linear model in it three different layers like uh, now we have a got one layer let's now try to print this in a three different uh, uh, different subplots because now we are using the face set underscore wrap which i already told you it's used to define the subplots now for that you will be seeing that we have now three different species shown with us different three subplots with the help of face set function and because of the fact we are using statistical layer the linear model got or linear regression model got created here right this is the point moving back to the original presentation let me now add the last layer that we got it's called themes layer so so we are also left with the coordinate coordinate layer as well let's let me now adjust the layers adjust the x and y axis currently you can see uh the x and y axis got added uh, with, by the system itself we uh, we haven't changed we haven't made any change over there if you want to change the x and y axis we can do it with the coordinate layer how now we have currently reached to this point we have added data iris we have added the uh, scales like uh, x and y axis we have added the uh, scatter plot we have added the subplots we have added the linear regression model so now we are having this coordinate layer available for that what i'm uh, what i'm doing i'm using the function called cod underscore cartesian in which i'm specifying the limits that the x limit should be from 4 to 8 and y limit should be from 2 to 5 rest everything is same you can see now the layers got added okay earlier we used to have only single layer data now we got this uh, aes function we have a gm underscore point function stat underscore smooth function it means the layers got added now let's do it In this case, uh, only one thing extra we are using now. We are also now adding the li uh, library called DPLYR. The DPLYR function or uh, this library I've already have explained in my other video. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, I'll put up the link in this description box of this video. In which why I'm using this library DPLYR because the filter function is been defined over there. Because of this, uh, in this example, I would like to show the uh, information only uh, specific to the setosa. right the setosa species that's why we using filter here for that reason we have loaded the library called dplyr so i'll be putting up the link as well if you haven't watched that video so let me do it added now let's see what information we got you can see now we only got the information of the this one only of the setosa and you can see also the limits has been changed right it is from 2 to 5 and it's from 4 to 8 as per our own code own own uh, query whatever we have supplied in the coordinates right this is done 
now let's uh, conclude this video with the last little thing which is called themes now let's try to customize that last one is themes layer it means if you want to change the labels of x or y axis you want to add a plot title you want to modify a legend title you want to add text anywhere on the plot change the background color it means just for customization we have this layer available called themes layer in which we are using a themes here it means i want to change the color to red i want to enhance the size okay 14 let's do it last little point uh, just little customization the rest everything will remain same so this is the last point we got now in which we want to change the theme of the graph let me clear the screen and i'm copy and pasting here the code and let's see what happens you can see that colors has been changed okay of the x axis and y axis right and it has been enhanced as well you can see the 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 y axis and x axis uh, font size got also got increased right so this marks the end of this today's video i hope you must have understood the ggplot and its layers in case something is not clear kindly comment on this video thanks for watching guys see you next video